High in a remote area of the Alps in northern Italy, 5,300 years ago, Otzi the Iceman was shot in the back with an arrow. It hit a main artery and he probably bled to death within minutes. His body was preserved in the ice, making him one of the oldest and best preserved mummies on Earth. Most anthropologists believe that Iceman fled up the mountain and was shot with an arrow from 30 meters, about 100 feet. So whoever killed him did so from a safe distance. The arrow that hit his left shoulder would have severed his subclavian artery and caused him to bleed to death in minutes. Was Iceman a revenge murder? We will never know. But it might be one of the coldest cold cases of murder in humankind. One or two days before the murder, there was a fight. Iceman was part of that fight and he managed to defend himself, grabbing a sharp object like a knife. He had a massive injury to his right hand. A sharp object, possibly a flint-tipped spear or dagger, punctured the base of his thumb, shredding skin and muscle right to the bone, and a second blow damaged a bone on his wrist. The thumb wound had no scar, meaning it was fresh when the Iceman died. DNA analyses claim to have revealed traces of blood from at least four other people on his gear, one from his knife, two from a single arrowhead in his quiver, and a fourth from his coat. Interpretations of these findings were that Iceman killed two people with the same arrow and was able to retrieve it on both occasions, and the blood on his coat was from a wounded comrade he may have carried over his back. About 33 hours before he died, the 46-year-old Iceman ate a meal in the mountains. Then, in the next nine hours before death, he descended the mountain, sharpened his end scraper and borer and probably worked on his bow and arrow shafts. A little while later, he got into a skirmish and was stabbed on his right hand. Some 12 hours before he died, he ate another meal in a valley, and then climbed nearly two miles up the mountain again, which was a hike of about a day or two away from his community. Five or four hours before death, he had a third meal and perhaps a little later a fourth. Then an arrow shot by a southern alpine archer struck the iceman from behind, shattering his scapula and severing an artery. If Iceman was shot at close proximity, the energy would have caused the arrowhead to travel into his back and to exit. Instead it remains lodged near the shoulder blade. Iceman seems to have been quite relaxed up on the glacier just before he was shot. About half an hour before he was killed, he was resting up there. He was having quite a heavy lunch or meal at least, so it doesn't seem like he was in a rush or fleeing from something. Most suspicious of all was the copper axe left beside him. In the Stone Age, a copper axe was a status symbol that only a tribal leader or very important person would possess. If someone put an arrow in Iceman's back, why leave the most valuable possession behind? Perhaps whoever killed Iceman knew he would look pretty guilty walking around with a murdered man's axe? Another crucial clue came from the injury on Iceman's right hand, a wound he received one or two days before his death probably during a fight. That injury was something we would define as a classic active defense wound. That would be like if somebody threatens you with a knife and he stabs you, if you grab the knife and try to push it away. They then found another cut on the left hand and bruises on the torso, as if Iceman had been beaten. Blood from one person was found on the back of Iceman's cloak, and blood from two people was found on the same arrow in his quiver, and more blood was on the knife. Blood on the back of the cloak may have come from a wounded colleague that Iceman was carrying over his shoulder. Blood of two people was found on the same arrow, suggesting Iceman killed two men and retrieved the arrow. These injuries indicated that Iceman was in one heck of a fight for his life before he died. The CAT scans revealed further proof of a struggle, darker areas on his brain indicating a brain fracture. The injuries painted a picture of Iceman's final hours, and that he did not die a natural death. That's him, Iceman. It's the way he flies, ice cold, no mistakes. Although he is older than the Giza pyramids and Stonehenge, the 5,300-year-old Tyrolean Iceman continues to teach us things. His story is set in Central Europe 5,300 years ago from the northern Alps of Italy to the eastern lands, along the Danube River to Vinca, the earliest European Bronze Age civilization. Iceman may have been a chieftain of a South Tyrolean tribe, scrounging for a living in the high mountains. 
To support his village he travels on foot to hunt and trade with the people on the north side of the mountains. Circa 3235 BC was around the time that Iceman was born. He lived in the area of present-day Austria and Italy. Major climate shift possibly due to shift in solar activity. Glacier expand, covering plants because atmospheric temperatures fell during the 32nd century. On his father's side, Iceman had common ancestors with those who lived in Sardinia and Corsica and migrated to Europe from the east. His mother's side could be traced to a population from the Central Alps that doesn't exist anymore. There is common ancestry between the Iceman and present-day inhabitants of the Tyrrhenian Sea, including Corsica and Sardinia. These people are closely related to the Riti people, who were a confederation of Alpine tribes, whose language and culture was probably related to those of the Etruscans. Ancient sources characterize the Riti as Etruscan people, who were displaced from the Po Valley by the Gauls and took refuge in the valleys of the Alps. But it is likely that they were predominantly indigenous Alpine people. Their language, the so called Raetian language, was probably related to Etruscan, but may not have derived from it. No next of kin was around to claim the frozen body of the Iceman when it was found in the Italian Alps, but researchers now report that there are at least 19 genetic relatives of the Iceman living in Austria's Tyrol region. Indeed, these men and the Iceman had the same ancestors. By autosomal DNA, Iceman is most closely related to southern Europeans, especially to geographically isolated populations like Corsicans and Sardinians. He was part of the migration of early European farmers who migrated from Anatolia to Europe in large numbers during the 7th millennium BC, replacing earlier Europe's hunter gatherers. Researchers found the 19 genetic matches by looking through the DNA records of 3,700 Austrian blood donors for a rare Y chromosome mutation known as G, L91. The mutation is a reliable marker for ancestral relationships, because it tends to be passed down intact from one generation to the next. But because it's on the Y sex chromosome, the marker can be used only to trace male ancestry. Scientists are using genetic markers to get a better sense of how different populations spread throughout the Alpine regions. So far, their research suggests that migration patterns favored Austria's Pilisattle Pass over the Landeck district in prehistoric times. The Y chromosome DNA of Iceman belongs to a subclade of GL91. GL91 is now mostly found in South Corsica. Analysis of his mitochondrial DNA showed that Iceman belongs to the K1 subclade, but cannot be categorized into any of the three modern branches of that subclade. The study was able to confirm that the Iceman's mitochondrial DNA belongs to a previously unknown European mitochondrial DNA clade, with a very limited distribution among modern data sets. Researchers compared Iceman's mitochondrial genome to 115 samples from modern Europeans. His is within a group called K1 that first appeared in Europe 200 centuries ago. That's why scientists first thought Iceman had descendants but now that they have his full mitochondrial genome, by far the oldest ever to be sequenced, they know that Iceman's subtype is unique. The maternal lineage of the Iceman has apparently gone extinct. It's possible that it could still be there in the Alps somewhere among modern Europeans. But, if so, it's very rare and has not spread any farther than that. And when compared with artifacts recovered from the Copper Age, when the Iceman lived, it appears that his tools were stylistically influenced by other Alpine cultures. Clearly, the 46-year-old Iceman, who lived in the South Tyrol region of northern Italy between 3100 and 3370 BC, survived by staying on the move. That is, until he was violently killed. Now if scientists can just identify DNA samples from his killers. Further research found that the arrow's shaft had been removed before death, and close examination of the body found bruises and cuts to the hands, wrists and chest and cerebral trauma indicative of a blow to the head. It was thought that the position of the left arm was due to Iceman's effort to stop the hemorrhage or the acute pain. But now the discovery of the head trauma paints a new picture of Iceman's final hours. Blood loss from the arrow wound would have first made Iceman lose consciousness. According to the researchers, death came later, from a violent blow to the head. 
Either the man's killer gave Iceman the final whack, possibly by hitting him with a stone, or he could have fallen over backwards and hit his head on a rock. There is no more doubt that the Iceman died after a violent encounter with his assailants, some of whose blood was found on his cloak and weapons, and the theory of a solitary death from blood loss, hunger, cold and weakness seems no longer tenable. Scans also revealed iron crystals around the right eye and forehead, which produce a bluish hue. And since the region's rocks are naturally low in iron, the iron is a sign of a hematoma, or massive bleeding outside of the blood vessels. Iceman did not suffer other defense injuries, so he won the initial fight, which possibly took place down in the valley. The killing up on the glacier is probably the continuation of this fight that happened about one and a half days before. Knowing that he was unlikely to win in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Iceman's killer probably stealthily followed him up the mountain and shot him. The glacier is a very remote area and probably not a place where you would randomly run into each other. But who was the offender and what were his motives? He got away with murder and the assailant didn't steal Iceman's valuable copper blade axe and other gear, so it is unlikely to have been a crime for profit, so it was probably due to some strong personal emotion. If there was hate, if it was jealousy, if it was revenge, we will not be able to tell you. I don't think there is a high likelihood we will ever be able to solve that case. The offender got away with that murder. Maybe it was a tribal dispute, such as a conflict between hunter-gatherers and Neolithic farmers or herders over the land. So therefore the fatal blow looks like a continuation. From a behavioral perspective, Taking aim at Iceman from far away suggests that the killer might have learned from a physical fight one to two days before, which didn't go well, so the decision was made to kill and shoot from a distance. That kind of violent escalation is very familiar to modern criminal investigators. Usually it doesn't start with a murder. There was other violence before. If you look at Iceman's case, you have conflict, which is not just a verbal conflict, it is violence. The crime may have happened long, long ago, but it is interesting, because you still see those kinds of behaviors nowadays in homicide cases. I don't think we have changed over the past 5,000 years, because it's always the same. We have motives of revenge, anger, and strong emotions of hate. This reinforces evidence that Neolithic times were quite violent, because from the bones found in the Alps it appears there were battles way up there, 